here and welcome to another video. This one's going to be different. As I'm sure you can see by the location, I'm not in my normal bedroom, uh, <laughs> computer area. Uh, I'm at my new workstation, I guess. I don't know. Uh, my hobby zone, my meadery, my, my own small mini meadery. So we're going to talk about mead in this video. Um, I want to go over just a little bit of my, my, my past experiences, what I think kind of drew me towards mead, uh, how I started my first batch of mead, and the reviews that I got from it last night when I had somebody that is literally does not have a filter. Um, try it and I got the raw brutal review of somebody that once once again I said literally has no filter cannot lie so <clears throat> if you like this video if you want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing to the channel like the video leave a comment in the section down below anything you got to say let's hear it um so before we even get started tomorrow morning I'm going to be doing a live stream for the live stream, I'm going to be putting together a couple batches of meat. Um, I'm going to try a couple different variations of a mango meat, and we're gonna see how they go. And it should be pretty cool, it should be pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to be doing it right here on YouTube, not on Twitch. Uh, Twitch is going to be where I'll be playing Path of Exile. Um, I, I've streamed once on League Start, and I'm going to be streaming after this video goes live, just so you're aware. Actually, no, I'm recording it on my phone, so I may just upload it through my phone. And it, you know, I'll be I'll be streaming Path of Exile today on twitch.tv slash Kamal underscore prime. So, tomorrow morning will be a live stream where I make meats. I'm hoping that you guys can join me. If not, don't fret. It will be uploaded as a video after after I'm done streaming it. So let's talk about why mead. Well, mead's really hard to find. It's almost impossible to find. I've looked around for the past few years to find mead local. Um, I understand that I can buy it online. I don't want to buy it online. I want to walk into a store and buy it. Um, I don't know why. I've just never bought it online. I, I just want to walk into a store and buy it. Anyways, I finally, finally, finally was able to find some at the local store. So I get the mead, and I try it, and I'm like... I mean, I can see how people would like this, but it's not really what I ever would have imagined as mead. Um, and what drew me to, to wanting to try mead is I'm, I'm a chef. I like to try different foods. I like to try different drinks. I just like to experience different flavors. Um, it's one thing that I've really enjoyed um, about the, the history that I've had in cooking. Um, I actually am a personal chef for a couple different people, uh, meaning I do their meal prep, and it, it's just something that I've always kind of enjoyed. I don't like working in big kitchens. It's too stressful. It's too hectic. I don't like it. I'm way more calm and mellow than that. However, I love cooking in my own kitchen for people that are close to me. So with me not being able to find mead, I'm like, man, you know, the Norse and Viking culture is, is getting much, much more popular, which is great because I've always been attracted to Norse culture. And then recently I was able to trace my lineage back to my third great grandfather, Simon Petter Guthu, who immigrated here from Norway. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, 1862 from so that's pretty awesome immigrated to Wisconsin I was like interesting okay so that makes sense why even though I've lived and 
traveled all over the country, like the nature aspect of Oregon has always kept me coming back. I can't get away from Oregon uh, just because of how gorgeous the outside is. Um, I mean, I have a mountain view multiple different directions as I'm driving my wife to work in the morning or picking her up in the afternoon. So it just, it's, it's a different kind of environment. And when I found out that I, you know, I actually am Norse or Scandinavian um, in my lineage, I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, Viking culture is becoming, or not Viking culture, but the culture that has to do with Norse in general. A lot of people are attracted, especially with the show Vikings, even though that's, there's a lot of people that complain that Vikings is not historically accurate. And to those people, I say, no shit. Um, it's, it's very obvious that it's not even close to remotely historically accurate. They've just picked characters from, uh, Norse history and kind of thrown them together. It's an entertaining show. I like the show. I actually very much so like the show. I understand. I'm able to separate actual historical events and fantastical television shows or uh, comic books, stories, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> so I see this rise, also with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this rise of the interest in Viking cultures, and yet still, it's almost impossible to find mead. I can't find mead. So, it leads me to looking up how it's made. Like, I know that it's honey wine, but I don't know how to ferment. I've never made alcohol before. I don't even really drink alcohol. I'll occasionally, uh, maybe once every few months, buy a six pack and over the course of a couple weeks, drink like one beer a night. And generally when I drink that one beer, half of it gets dumped out the next morning. I like the flavors. I don't drink to feel anything, but I, I, I've, the fact that I've never been able to find meat, except for this one time, made it all that more alluring. So I find mead and I try it and it's basically a lightly alcoholed sparkling water is what it tastes like to me. It tastes almost like a champagne. And it just didn't it just didn't sit well with me. Like it didn't make me sick or anything. It, it was fine. It just didn't seem like mead and I just felt like I could do not necessarily better because that's kind of a shallow way of seeing it but different more of what I'm looking for more of what I imagine mead would taste like so <clears throat> I start googling I start youtubing I start reading and watching videos and I start realizing that this is very simple. Uh, you can make a mead with three ingredients very easily. A very simple, plain, traditional mead. Three ingredients, bing, bang, boom, easy, cheesy, lemon, sweet. So, I'm like, okay, let's go shopping. I go to Walmart. I get a container of apple juice. Apple juice comes in this glass jug, three quarters of a gallon. Hmm, it works. Eight dollars comes with juice. So my son and I get to enjoy some really, really good pressed apple juice. And then when it's done, I can clean it out and I can make meat in it. Fantastic. I've got a total of four of these now. Um, I get that for eight dollars. I pick this honey up. Now, we go through a lot of honey making teas and things like that. 
So I pick this honey up and we drink two gal or two gallons, two pounds of it, just you know, teas and uh, honey butter toast and different things like that. And the other just under three pounds because it says five pounds. It's not five pounds. It's like four pounds, like twelve ounces. Um, so with the last almost three pounds, I pour them there. And then I fill it up maybe be about this much with water. So it's got honey, it's got water. I shake it up really, 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 really good. Pour more water in it, shake it up really, 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 really good. More water in it, you know, I get it up to about here. So um, there will be links in the description for uh, pictures. I'm going to start a Facebook page. Um, I'll probably just, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but there will be a Facebook page where I'll have all the pictures from me going through the process of making this. It's very rudimental. It's very uh, simplistic. It's also very cheap. It's also a variation numero uno. My first ever attempt at not only making me but making any type of fermented or alcoholic beverage at all. I mean, I've made mixed drinks before. That doesn't count. I mean, like, actually turning something into alcohol. Um, but I figure with my background, it can't be too difficult, right? I mean, if I'm, if I'm, I, I want to say naturally slightly gifted in the kitchen. I'm no Gordon Ramsay, uh, but I know my way around the kitchen fairly well. Um, so I throw it all together. I get a little container of Fleischmann's active dry yeast uh, or fast acting yeast, which is it's like two dollars for a container. All in all, for this, including the, the the little small three quarters of a gallon carboy, it cost me like thirty two dollars, and that's including two of these. So. I mean, and that's with twice as much honey as I needed, almost twice as much, um, everything. So I threw it all in the jug, mix it all up, and I'll be doing, like I said, the live stream tomorrow where you can actually watch me do this, where I show you how I do this. This will be the, I guess, the third batch, but uh, jars number five and six. Um, so definitely check that out mix it all up, threw the stopper in there, put a little bit of vodka in the stopper. Um, I wanted, a, a, you know, like a, a neutral alcohol, something that wouldn't allow bacteria to grow, something that wouldn't allow anything to, you know, transfer through unwantingly. And I let it sit. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I also threw in a whole shit ton of raisins. Um, I didn't know how much was a good amount and before I knew it there was a lot um, there was a lot and I threw almost an entire orange I took an orange and I cut it in half with half of the orange I cut into slices and I threw it in there meat peel all of it the other one the other half I took the meat out of because my son wanted he wanted some orange uh, sliced up the, the peel threw it in there so it it was deemed a orange raisin walmart bean um we'll call it the sammy blend because sam walton so i made it i let it sit for 16 days after 16 days i pulled it out and it looked very orange it looked pretty much like this like this one, this is a mango orange one that I'm attempting. Um, as you can see, it is still fermenting and carbonating. We're creating a lot of a lot of bubbles. Uh, it's doing its thing. This one is not vodka up there. It's actually the sanitizer solution. I didn't have sanitizer solution when I started the first one. I had vodka. Um, but I let it sit for. 16 days it looked about that color a little bit lighter um 
and I decided to taste it. I was like, it's not really bubbling anymore. You know, it's taking like three minutes in between each bubble, so that tells me that the yeast is pretty much dead in it, or not dead, but stopped doing its thing. Um, so let's test it. At this point in time, I got the hydrometer and the sanitizer solution. When I first made it, I didn't have any of these utensils yet. I was waiting for all of them to come in. Um, once they all came in, I had them all. So I had sanitizer solution, I had the hydrometer, the, the auto siphon, um, you know, a, a tub to actually sanitize everything in, spray bottle of sanitizer. I also got something that I've seen that some people are against, some people are for. Me personally, I, as I do with most things, um, I kind of lean both ways, teeter-tottering either way. Now, this is potassium sorbate, which stops yeast from, uh, it prevents yeast from furthering fermentation, but it doesn't stop it from fermenting. And this potassium metabisulfite actually stops it from fermenting. So this stops it from fermenting, this stops it from restarting. There's other ways that you can do that. These are the ways that I chose because it's what I chose. If you want to criticize me, that's fine. I understand, but uh, I don't care. So I use those because when I tasted it, I was very satisfied with the flavor. And I wanted to keep it at that point. When I measured it, I think it was at a 1050. So it was still extremely sweet, but it was also extremely murky. Um, some of you may say that 1050 is way too early to pull it out. I honestly don't know. I don't know when a good time to pull it out is. I, I like the way that it tasted, so I pulled it out. I was able to test it on here. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So I don't know, I mean 1050, it seems like it says that's I don't know, dude. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. It, it tasted sweet, but it wasn't overly sweet. Um, and I also felt like the fact that it was super, super murky, the fact that it was super, super murky made me feel like that potentially played a role into the reading as well. So I just decided to stop it right where it was. I thought it tasted fine. Um, and it didn't need to go anymore. It wasn't continuing to ferment, so the yeast that I had put in there, it was either working so slow that it was barely doing anything, or it just wasn't going. Um, and no, I was wrong. It was 10.50 the first time I checked it. When I got the potassium sorbate, that was a few days later. That was like three days later. I tested it again, and it was at 10.40. So it was still fermenting, just extremely slow. Uh, so that is why I decided to put the potassium sorbate and metabisulfite in it. I wanted to have it on hand just in case. When I saw that it was still fermenting after a week, um, Not a week, three days, four days. Uh, after I saw that it was still fermenting, I was like, okay, I, I want to stop it. I don't want it to keep going. So I put those in there. I let it sit for another day with those in it. And then I transferred it to another container. And then I threw it in the refrigerator. Um, I let it sit in the refrigerator for like two or three days with the bottle or, or with the top. It was still one of these, but I had it to where the twist top was on it, and it was so loose that like air could escape if it needed to, and I just checked it each day just to see what it was doing. I also had a mason jar with a little bit in it, and I had the, the cap completely closed, and I would go in and check to see if the pressure cap, how it was feeling, um, but I let it sit just to make sure that the stuff did work. 
and it did work. And so after a couple days in the fridge, I decided to pull it out and I put it into individual bottles. And this is what we came out with. So this is the orange mango Walmart mead. Um, and the reviews from last night, well, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law came over and then my, my actual brother and mom came over. Um, my mother-in-law a couple years back, she had a stroke. When she had a stroke, it all but completely dissolved her ability to censor herself and to not say exactly what she's thinking. That's critical for me. For me, I'm a very brutally honest person. Um, I've had people tell me, I've realized, uh, quote from other people, um, I've realized that if I try to beat around the bush, you'll go out of your way to ignore me. I have to be as brutally truthful with my opinions and critiques as possible. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not a child. Just tell me how it is and I'll, I'll deal with it, you know? Um, so having somebody that's unable to censor themselves actually try this was great. What made it even better is that she likes wine. Um, she's not an alcoholic, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when she does drink, she drinks wine. That's what she likes to drink, that's what she prefers. And so she, when she came over, I was like, here, I want you to try this. And I had two of these remaining. I had drank in a mason jar of it. Um, I had two of these remaining. And so I cracked one open and I poured her a glass. And her first taste, I could tell that she did not like it. But I told her beforehand, I was like, listen, you need to take the first drink and you need to acclimate your mouth. Trust me, it's going to be really weird feeling and tasting the first drink. I realized this when I had first tried it. It's very, like, very uh, aggressive, the first drink. The first drink is a very aggressive uh, alcohol flavor. But as soon as you acclimate your tongue to it, it's extremely smooth. At least that's the way that I felt about it. So I was telling her that, you know, take, take a drink or two, get your tongue used to it, and then let me know what you think. Uh, I also poured a glass for my brother-in-law, my brother and my mom. My brother and mom had tried it before those. Um, I sent my brother home with a little mason jar before I put the, that stuff in it. And I was like, you know, keep the cap off and just give it to mom when you get home. And so now they got to try the final product because they tried it when it still looked like this. And now they got to try it when it looked like this, which is completely different. Um, <clears throat> you can see there's still a little bit at the bottom, but that's fine. It's going to happen as it sits. The stuff is going to continue to fall. Uh, if it's that big of a deal, you can always rack it from there into a, another bottle another time and try to completely alleviate it. Me personally, I'm not worried about it. This, this bottle here is for when my best friend gets back from the Philippines and my other close friend comes up from California and we all get together, we are going to sit back and drink this. I don't care if it takes six months or six years for that to happen, this will be in my fridge until that day comes. So there's that. Uh, but we drank the other one and so she took a couple sips and she tried it and she was like, I don't know. And she kind of like moved the glass to the other side of the table. And I was like, all right, you know, that's fine. That's fine. You know, it, it's, it's understandable. I get it. And so I go into the kitchen and I start, start cooking. And you know, my wife's kind of chuckling about it because my mother-in-law at first, she wasn't willing to try it. She's like, no, I'm okay. And then she was like, will it get you drunk? I'm like, 
it's alcohol. Of course it will. Like I'm not I'm not giving you I'm not giving you something that's called honey wine that doesn't have any alcohol in it. It's honey wine. You drink enough of it, you'll get drunk. And so then she was like, oh, okay, I'll try it. And, I mean, she had brought a bottle of wine for us to drink. And I guess that kind of tells the rest of the story that it's not cracked. But she takes a drink of it sets it down, moves it to the other side of the table. I go in and I start cooking. And then like 10 minutes go by, me and my brother-in-law are in there and my brother. So we're all three in there. And you know, we're all drinking, you know, our little, our little sips of mead. And we're kind of talking about it. I'm explaining to my brother-in-law how it all worked. And the next thing I know, my mother-in-law is standing at our bar asking if it's possible that I fill her glass for her. And I'm like, oh, really? Yes, I can totally do that. Like, I, I was so happy because, once again, her brain doesn't allow her to lie. Um, so that was great because like she not only can I have more but can you fill my glass and then she ends up you know getting kind of buzzed and just relaxing on the couch for a bit it was great it was it was so amazing to have somebody because I know that my brother and my mom my mom she would probably be prone to being kind of honest my brother he doesn't care uh, <laughs> a, a very big example of why my brother is not a good person to ask if something is good or not. Two years ago, my brother and I, we have the same birthday, mind you. We're not twins, a year apart, same birthday. So my son and my wife are making the cake while my brother and I are sitting in the living room playing video games. And this was last year. And we get the cake. And my son was in charge of mixing the cake. My brother has a fried egg in the, in the middle of his piece of cake. And he's just, I don't know, it tastes fine to me. And just chowing down on a fried egg in the middle of this fucking cake. Like, I was just like, all right, man. Like, If you like it, you like it. Fuck it. I mean, whatever. I found it pretty entertaining. Um, so, of course, my brother liked it. My mom liked it. My brother-in-law, he was just fascinated with the idea that I made this myself, you know, and how it wasn't really that expensive. Um, but, yeah, it, it was really surprising to me that something that seems so simple to brew is so unavailable and I just don't understand why I think mead has the potential to be possibly making a resurgence it would be phenomenal if so um I just feel like there's not enough people trying to make different variations to reach out to more people. I mean, think about beer, for example. Oh, you like beer. Okay. Which kind? Do you like a Pilsner? Do you like a Hefeweizen? Uh, do you like Porter, Stout, IPAs, Ales? Um, do you Okay, let's say that you like a stout. Uh, do you want it barrel aged? What kind of barrel aged? Uh, you know, let's say you like IPA. Okay, well, do you want a Northeastern IPA? Do you want a Northwestern IPA? Do you, I mean, like, there's so many different styles of beer. And yet, when it comes to mead, there seems to be, like, only a couple widespread 
variations. I'm hoping that we can get that to change because Mead is amazing and I think Mead can hopefully um, be something that more people start looking into. Um, like I said, with the rise of the popularity of you know Norse mythology and Norse culture, Viking culture in general, um, I know that there will be some people that will not like it being called Viking culture, but really that's what people refer to it as. I completely understand that it is not a Viking culture, but colloquially it is called Viking culture. Deal with it, okay? Um, anyways, that's the video. I'm not going to continue rambling. If I like, I could legit sit here for probably hours and just continue to talk about this stuff. When it comes to cooking, I am thoroughly enthused with the amount of difference a small variation can make. That translates completely over into brewing. And that's why tomorrow I'm going to be starting two different meads of almost the exact same thing, but slightly different. Uh, they're each going to be mango meads, and they're going to be made separately, differently, slightly. And we're going to see how it turns out. So I hope to see you guys there, or I hope to at least see you, uh, you know, in the comment section of the video when it's uploaded afterwards. And... Yeah, we'll see you then. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. And 2020, hopefully, is going better for you. And or 2021 is going better than 2020. I found out that uh, I stopped watching the news and I stopped paying attention to politics. Things seem way better now. It's pretty awesome. So, I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. I'm out.